welcome to season three of the Mindfulness Pilates podcast. I'm Beverly Densham, Pilates teacher of over 23 years. I really look forward to bringing you tips to reduce back pain to feel good, relaxation, positive affirmation and inspiration every week to inspire you in body and mind. For more relaxation, stretching, core stability, back strength and happiness. A big welcome to this week's podcast. It's three tips to help you after disc problems in the back. And of course, it's for your happiness as well, your relaxation and all those things as well. Haven't got much to report this week. It's just been a really lovely week of teaching, um, both one-to-ones and classes at my Mindfulness Pilates Zoom studio. And just having really beautiful quality time with my little family and a uh, nice time for myself as well. So let's get straight into it, I think. Oh, but next, I'm just thinking when the article's coming out, actually. When is the article coming out in the Daily Express? Oh, it is coming out tomorrow. <laughs> I'm just trying to think, when is it coming out? Tomorrow, so you can read it um, any t- time. There's always the online version as well as the newspaper copy. It's all about manifestation. And yeah, I'm sharing my take on that with my sports science background and how powerful visualization is about bringing manifestations and goals to fruition. And there's also an interesting psychologist and manifest author in there as well. So it's going to be an interesting read, I think. So there we go. There we go. So let's get on with the tips. And as usual, I will pick you a calm and happy card today as well as a meditation for you too. Right, let's go for the tips then. So tip one is obviously if you have got, you know, big pain, massive pain, very acute pain going on, it's always sensible to see a doctor first, physio, osteopath, chiropractor, it's always a good first um, starting point. You know, it does help if you have a diagnosis. And and obviously you can start one-to-one mindfulness Pilates with me. Um, my best ever testimonial ever, ever was working with a leisure centre manager, Mike, in Hertfordshire many years ago now. But it was my best result ever for somebody because his um, diagnosis after seeing the doctor, seeing the consultant, having MRI scan, and was that he was booked in for a discectomy back operation um, with the NHS and in six weeks' time. And he decided to see me, his words, not mine, as a last ditch resort. He came to see me one to one for mindfulness Pilates and um, before going under the knife, his words, not mine. And yeah, he, he, he worked, worked really hard with his one to ones and practiced a lot. And yeah, the operation had to be cancelled. He didn't need it. Um, he didn't need it anymore. So that was that was amazing because he's back able to do things he, he loves doing, such as golf and just and just leading a normal life, really. So that was really nice. So, yeah, the first thing is, is to do that. But you can start, you know, Pilates pretty early on. There's a lot you can do very gently and safely. Uh, there's a lot of things, of course, exercise wise, which aren't good, including, you know, some Pilates exercises. Some of the advanced stuff is some of the worst things you could possibly do when you're going through, you know, just having had a prolapse disc. And another week, um, I'm going to be chatting to, as guests on the podcast, physiotherapist, osteopath, chiropractor. We've got Emily coming up, osteopath, talking about also about this topic. I'm going to be sharing some of her tips. And also Becky, physiotherapist, is going to be coming on to talk about um, breaking the cycle of, you know, it is a, it can be a vicious cycle. It really can be a vicious cycle. When I was younger, um, I've had, I had many back problems over the years. And it did start in childhood with me, actually, with overuse in sport. I was a national junior squash player playing, you know, tournaments all over the country. Also an 800, 1500 metre runner and cross country runner. And what I found was I was in a constant cycle, really, of being okay, then really not okay, and in and out um, seeing the practitioners, um, but never keeping up enough exercise. When I say exercise, the right exercise to support my body to manage what I was doing, but actually I had overuse 
from a young age and some of the training I was doing in hindsight, it was very bad for my underdeveloped body. So um, I think these days it's a lot better, but you know, it's best to start Pilates earlier than later, but most people become because they need it as opposed to being sensible of prevention. Prevention, mindfulness Pilates is brilliant for prevention of injury. But it's quite exciting this year. I do seem to be, um, more clients seem to be booking in in a sensible way of also like injury free and they might sit at desk all day, desk bound type jobs and are wanting to improve their core stability and posture and how they're feeling and their fitness and also to prevent injury. So that, that's obviously really good. Okay, so that's tip one. See your doctor, physio, osteopath, chiropractor, and you can see me one to one when there's, you know, you're at a more severe stage. Number two is address your stress levels. I cannot emphasize this enough. You know, what is what is the cause of it? And a lot of people think it's the final straw thing that happened, but often it's been leading up to it for a while, or there can be a root cause. I mean, it's different if there's been an accident or something that's very different. Um, I've had both scenarios in the back and body injuries in the past myself. So address, you know, when did your symptoms start? What was going on in your life at the time? Were there some big or small or medium or major stresses going on? Because this is a very important factor. I'm going to tell you a story of something that happened to me. It's very very long time ago and I lived in Hertfordshire and I was going through major major um, major stress in relation to divorce and the thing I just want to mention on this is at the time my back got a lot worse and that it got so much worse I'd seen the doctor been for an MRI scan and the consultant that said I have spinal injections so I did I went off and had spinal injections and to be honest you know Different treatments, different interventions, you know, can help different people. Um, I literally only got relief when I was like completely numb from the procedure. And it was actually really nice to just feel nothing. <laughs> um, but then, yeah, it, it actually didn't help. I'm not saying these things don't help. It's just for me anyway. But more than anything, I believe I, I didn't really need to have had that because I, I believe a lot of the exacerbated increased pain was actually from the stress of what I was going on going on personally at the time and that can have you know don't underestimate what effects that can have on different areas of your body so I really think it's worthwhile addressing you know the stress that's going on you know whether that's delegating getting different professional help with that whatever that might be um, mindfulness pilates alone can massively help with stress um, because also it's about looking after yourself, it's about loving yourself, it's about self-care, it's about, you know, not just doing something once a week, it's about, you know, incorporating it into your lifestyle, your work, it's about, you know, doing a minimum of 16 minutes practice every morning, you know, start your day either first thing or, just, or before breakfast to do six minutes practice. Um, I get, I give my clients, all my clients, a six minute little video to practice every day, or some of them just many do it off by heart. It feels like two minutes when you're practicing six minutes, it's nothing. But it makes such a difference to your body and your mind and your happiness, your mindset, your emotions. It just sets you up in such a better way. And, you know, most people come to me, you know, because of their backs, their discs, particularly their knees, the hips, the shoulders, you name it different pains going on rarely do people admit that they're coming from stress occasionally thank you Debbie for coming on the podcast and admitting that that was the reason you booked in um, but most people don't but, but the lovely thing is the bonus of doing mindfulness plus people think body 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 yeah it's yeah it's very very good for the body and I think it's one of the best ways to meditate actually because or being mindful because you have to be in the moment you have to think about what you're doing and it's an incredible way to switch off, let alone, of course, when I add in the goal setting and the intention setting and doing separate little 30 seconds and one minute and five minute meditation, relaxation at the end. It's obviously lovely. But in that majority of that movement that you're doing, you know, you have to move. We need to move more. You know, the older you, we get as well, the more we need to move and 
And most most people assume and have a belief that the older we get, you know, the less movement we will do because that's the perception we're given of elderly overall, which is not true, as in it does not have to be true. In fact, if you do, if you take the mindfulness of Pilates approach, it doesn't matter what age you are, it's pretty irrelevant actually. And, and kind of my mum, hi mum, is a role model for this. You know, she's 81 years old and she's fit, stronger and fitter than a lot of my clients half her age. Now, why is that? It's because she puts the hours in, you know, she does four hours a week lessons with me. She practices every day. She swims nearly every day. She is moving, she is gardening, you know, and before she was doing that, she was getting loads of hip pain and, you know, aches and pains that she shared on the podcast before. So yeah, I hope, I hope that tip really helps you. And um, I'm going to go on to tip three next. So yeah, get to the bottom of that stress and get doing some mindfulness Pilates. If you're not, let's go on to tip three. So I really hope tip two helped you, you know, the good news is I, I did find a solution to my back. When I say solution, did I cure my back? No, I didn't cure my back because there has been a lot of damage done and a road traffic accident, which was extremely severe. Um, and I managed things with my wrists pretty well, um, which was plated and screwed, but they be, they, be, they were taken out a year after that particular operation after road traffic accident. But what I'm trying to say is like with my back now, I manage it very well. I have, you know, the mindfulness Pilates gives me quality of life. And I, I don't have a choice actually. I have to practice what I teach because <laughs> it just keeps my back okay. Um, and managing any symptoms and keeping it as strong as possible and the core strong as possible. And, you know, keeping, keeping the stress at bay, using all these tools makes the world a difference. I just cannot emphasize it enough. So there we go. Number three, tip number three is all about posture. Now, the, the card I've picked you today from Calm and Happy Cards, my new deck, which will be out very soon, Valentine's Day, you can get pre-ordering, um, is I have good posture. When I sit and stand tall, I feel happy and my back feels stronger. So when, you, when you've had a disc problem or just the back in general, looking after the back, quite I find it quite an easy solution helping people I, I mean I have a formula I teach with bats and it and it does always help I can always help you reduce symptoms is what I find um doesn't mean that we're not necessarily working together with the medical side of things um but it does always you know help as long as you put in the work so posture and having your back straight now when I say back straight I don't mean like completely rigid I mean the natural curves of your spine when you're sitting and when you're standing and also it's about doing the basics to start with and getting confident that you can move. You know, I, I educate new clients and clients that haven't got it yet in their mind and their mindset that it is safe for you to move. So I have one of my regular clients, you know, um, had some pain, gets hip and low back things, sometimes he's a physio. If they're not doing enough Pilates and strengthening and stretching and they're getting symptoms, but of course, physios, osteopaths, chiropractors give exercises to help you. And the same with me, I do too, but it's about doing the right ones. So it is safe for you to move as long as you're doing the right exercises, strengthening, core stability, and, you know, back strengthening, you know, at, at your level. So, of course, they'll always give you the right level. And I will also always give you the right level. Now, that is the key. Some exercises will make you worse. Now, I had somebody come and do a taster once one um, in the last month, and I was a bit shocked to see they made up their own exercise program. Now, I really do not recommend you do that. You know, one of the things that she decided, she, she said, oh, I want to, you know, I know, I know it's good to improve my core stability, and then added in mm, intermediate to advanced exercise, which really is contraindicated and basically bad for the disc you know, especially in recovery stage. Now, some people get to a stage like myself where you, you, I can do intermediate to advanced Pilates exercises, most of them. However, you know, in recovery of this problem, it, you know, not recommended to do those sorts of exercises. And, and this 
particular person just made up their own certain program do not do that you know it's not a good idea <laughs> unless you're a practitioner physio osteopath chiropractor that teaches these things day in day out or someone like myself that is that can be detrimental so basically this person could have hurt themselves more by doing what she was doing you know and yet they didn't they didn't realize they were doing that so yeah be careful be careful you know seek you know seek professionals like myself to you know help you do the right thing because at the beginning you need to do the basics so watching your posture keeping your back straight when you're sitting when you're standing being very sensible how you move you know think about it with the posture so you know i was teaching weights today very light weights with the pilates and making sure not just that the clients are doing you know i can see as long as I, everyone's on video and i can talk to everyone and you know, I can I can correct everybody that they're in the right position, but equally, how are you picking something up? Your posture wants to be good when you're picking something up. Obviously, you don't pick something up that's too heavy. So when I was obviously advising my clients when they were picking up their weights, so those who have been using weights today, that they kept their back straight, they bent their knees, they used their deep abdominals as well. Obviously, you've got to walk, you need to walk regularly doesn't have to be far, but walk regularly and move regularly and do your mindfulness Pilates. You know, just taking those little breaks, um, you know, not sitting too long either. Um, gentle stretching is the key, basic core stability and basic back strengthening. But I really don't recommend you start doing back strengthening yourself unless you're with a teacher like myself, because everyone I've taught who's had a disc problem of some kind, uh, overworking the low back generally and not lifting and using the muscles from the right place or lifting too high etc like that so yeah you just got to watch it and uh yeah definitely 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 do not make up your own program that's disastrous <laughs> absolutely disastrous so they're the tips of the day today tips of the day um so we've got one is you know see a doctor physio osteopath chiropractor and someone like myself for one-to-ones. Uh, number two, address your stress levels, get to the root cause and get any help that you need with that. Obviously, mindfulness Pilates helps massively reducing stress levels. Um, one of my clients recently went from you know, 10 out of 10 anxiety to feeling happy in, her, in their life now. So um, thank you, Claire, for sharing that testimonial. And number three is watch your posture. It makes the world of difference. So let's um, let's finish off today with a little relax. Really hope you enjoy it. Welcome to today's meditation. Get yourself comfortable sitting or lying down. Breathe and relax and close your eyes. Breathing in through your nose, breathing out through your mouth, relax. With the beautiful affirmation of I have good posture. My posture is improving. If you have a lie down with your knees bent to support your back with a cushion behind your head, what you'll find is this will naturally improve your posture. How amazing is that? Breathe and relax. Just allowing your muscles to relax, your muscles to soften, and your spine to realign. Breathe and relax rejuvenating and plumping up your discs in your spine, helping your spine and back feel happier. My back is feeling happier. Breathe and relax. In through your nose, out through your mouth, relax. And breathe and relax. Let your tummy rise and fall. And breathe and relax. My posture is improving and breathe and relax. My muscles are happier. Breathe and relax. It's safe for me to move. Breathe and relax. It's safe for me to relax. Breathe and relax. 
and breathe and relax. I think about how I sit, how I stand, how I walk, how I move and get out of bed in the morning. Breathe and relax. I take regular breaks and I enjoy a self-care morning routine for myself every single day, even for just six minutes. Breathe and relax. My posture is improving. Breathe and relax. I feel happier. Breathe and relax. I can get stronger. Breathe and relax. I can get fitter. Breathe and relax. My back is strengthening. Breathe and relax. My core stability is strengthening. Breathe and relax. I am healing. Thank you. And breathe and relax for as long as you like, sending you lots and lots of love. So I really hope you enjoyed today's podcast, three tips uh, to help you after this problem and a little relaxation. How are you feeling after the relaxation? Um, Please rate and review if you're enjoying the podcast. And uh, yeah, I hope you are enjoying it this year. So we're on the and we're on the season that we're on for you. So that is really good. <laughs> anyway, I hope this has helped. Please um, write in or come and see me over on social media and love to hear how a podcast is helping and inspire you. And don't forget to gift it to a friend or family or to your all your friends on social media if you feel that would help them too. I love doing that for my favourite podcast because it's a beautiful little free gift you can give someone, isn't it? And um, different things help different people and we can always get different angles of help. It's really, really amazing. Have a great week and sending you lots of love. Thanks for listening. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Mindfulness Pilates podcast. Please rate and review on your podcast platform. You can access my free healing, meditation and Pilates to ease back pain in three minutes on my website. You can also book your reduced back back pain to feel good one-to-one Mindfulness Pilates program on Zoom or Mindfulness Pilates membership by going to mindfulnesspilates.com.